Lecture 2. The theme of our lecture for today is The Highest Achievement of Old English Literature, Beowulf. Questions we are going to discuss are Characteristics of epic poems. The second one. Beowulf, the poetic masterpiece of English literature. And the last one is the Beowulf, plot and details of the story. An epic poem is a lengthy narrative work of poetry. These long poems typically detail extraordinary feats and adventures of characters from a distant past. The word epic comes from an ancient Greek term epos, which means story, word, and poem. The matter of epics varies depending on cultural custom. Ancient Greek epics and Latin epics were typically composed in a dactylic hexameter. Old Germanic epics, including those in Old English, typically contained non-rhyming alliterative verse. Later English language epics were written in Spenserian stanzas and black verse. An archetypical poem, typically, is written in a formal style, contains third-person narration and omniscient narrator, frequently invokes a muse who provides inspiration and guidance to the poet, takes place in era beyond the range of any living memory, typically includes a journey across a variety of settings and terrains. Features a hero with immense bravery and resolve. Includes obstacles and circumstances that are overworldly and even supernatural, pitting the hero against nearly insurmountable odds. Looks with concern to the future of a civilization or culture. Epics have the following main characteristics. It opens in media's rest, in the middle of things. The setting is vast and it covers many nations, the underworld and the universe. It starts with a statement of the scene. The use of episodes, a characterizing word or phrase used in place of a name of a person or thing. It includes long lists. It features long and formal speeches. It shows divine intervention on human affairs. The heroes embody the values of civilization. Out of the popular ballads or chiefly of the minstrel poetry, which is partly based on them, Regula develops epic poetry. Perhaps a minstrel finds a number of ballads which deal with the exploits of a single hero or with a single event. He combines them as best he can into a unified story and recites these on important and stately occasions. As his work passes into general circulation, other minstrels add other ballads, until at last, very likely after many generations, a complete epic is formed, outwardly continuous and whole, but generally more or less clearly separable on analysis into its original parts. Or, on the other hand, the combination may be mostly performed all at once at a comparatively late period by a single great poet who with conscious art weaves together a great mass of separate materials into the nearly finished epic. Not much Anglo-Saxon poetry of the pagan period has come down to us. By far the most important remaining example is the epic Beowulf of about 3,000 lines. This poem seems to have originated on the continent, but when and where are not now to be known. It may have been carried to England in the form of ballads by the Anglo-Saxons, or it may be Scandinavian material later brought in by Danish or Norwegian pirates. At any rate, it seems to have 
taken on its present form in England during the 7th and 8th centuries. The epic Beowulf is considered to be the first written masterpiece of English literature. This poem was composed by an unknown author. Many parts of the poem were added later, and the whole poem was written down in the 10th century by an unknown scribe. Now this manuscript is in the library of the British Museum. This poem tells of the time long before the Angles and Saxons came to Britain. There is no mentioning of England and Britain in the poem. The scene is set on the southern coast of the Scandinavian peninsula. The poem shows the various in battles and a peace, at feast and amusement, their love and adventures. As he appears in the poem, Beowulf is an idealized Anglo-Saxon hero, but in origin he may have been any one of several other different things. Perhaps he was the old Germanic god Beowa, and his exploits originally allegorous, like some of those in the Greek mythology. Of his services to man, he may, for instance, first have been the sun driving away the mists and cold to winter, and of the swamps, hostile forces personified in Grendel and his mother. Or Beowulf may really have been a great human fighter who actually killed some especially formidable wild beasts and whose superhuman strength in the poem results through the similarity of names from his being confused with Beowulf. This is the more like because there is in the poem a slight trace of authentic history. Beowulf presents an interesting, though very incomplete, picture of the life of the upper. Varia, castle among the northern Germanic tribes during their later period of barbarism on the continent and in England. A life more highly developed than that of the Anglo-Saxons before their conquest of the island. About King Hroga are grouped his immediate retains, the warriors with whom he shares his health. It is a part of the character of a good king to be generous in the distribution of gifts of gold and weapons. Somewhere in the background there must be a village where the bold men and slaves provide the daily necessaries of life and where some of the various may have houses and families. But all this is beneath the notice of the cowardly poet. The center of the various life is a great hall of the king built chiefly of timber. Near the center in the hills where the smoke must escape, if it escapes at all, through a hole in the roof. In the hall, the various banquet, sometimes in the company of their wives, but the women retire before the later revelry, which often leaves the man drunk on the floor. Sometimes it seems there are sleeping rooms or niches above the sides of the hall, but in Beowulf, Kroger and his flowers retired to other quarters. War, feasting and hunting are the only occupations in which the wearers care to be thought to make an interest. Beowulf is a protagonist and one of the original epic heroes. With his brave and noble nature, he defeats many dangers that have harmed his people. Beowulf is a young knight. He is ready to sacrifice his life struggling with the enemies. Beowulf exemplifies the traits of the perfect hero. The poem explores his heroism in two separate phases, youth and age and through three separate and increasingly difficult conflicts with Grendel, 
Grendel's mother and the dragon. Also, we can view these three encounters as expressions of the heroic code. There is perhaps a clear division between Beowulf's useful heroism as an unfettered warrior and his major heroism as a reliable king. In his youth, Beowulf is a great warrior characterized predominantly by his feats of strength and courage, including his fabled swimming match against Breca. He always perfectly embodies the matters and values dictated by the Germanic heroic code, including loyalty, courtesy, and pride. Beowulf's moral status becomes somewhat ambitious at the poem's end. Though he is deservedly celebrated as the great hero and leader, his last courageous fight is also somewhat rash. The motives in Beowulf help the reader understand the importance of ritual, place, and culture during the time period. The story is set in Scandinavia in the 6th century. Beowulf, a hero of the Geats, comes to the aid of Hroga, the king of the Danes, whose mid Helen Hurd has been under attack by a monster known as Grendel. After Beowulf slays him, Grendel's mother attacked the hole and in the end also defeated. Victorious Beowulf goes home to a Gitland and becomes king of the Geats. Fifty years later, Beowulf defeats a dragon, but is mortally wounded in the battle. After his death, his attendants cremate his body and erect a tower on a headland in his memory. The poem probably consists of two parts describing the lives of people of that time. The first part deals with Beowulf's fight with Grendel, a monster who came to King Hroga's palace and killed his people. In the hand-to-hand -hand struggle, Beowulf tears Grendel. In the second part, Grendel, who is mortally wounded, runs away to his den to die. Grendel's mother, a sea monster, tries to revenge Beowulf and renews attacks to the palace. Beowulf has to fight with her in her den. There is a very terrible fight and Beowulf is in triumph. In the third part, King Hroga offers him to stay in his kingdom, but Beowulf decides to go to his people, and after the death of his own king, Beowulf becomes a king of his people and reigns them gloriously for 50 years. The fourth part deals with Beowulf's fight with a dragon, and being already an old man, he is mortally wounded, but the slays the dragon and frees his people. He dies nobly. He sacrifices his life for his people. In the following two slides, there are given the details of the story. Here you can see the title, uh, the type, of the work, the genre, the language, and the main character of the story. Concluding our lecture, Beowulf is an old English epic poem which consists of 3,182 long lines. It is considered to be one of the most important books in Anglo-Saxon literature. The poem is set in Scandinavia, although it was written in England. It uses different dialects of Old English for the spelling and has many different linguistic styles. 
The lines in be a wolf use a lot of alliteration, meaning that they repeat certain syllables or sounds. It is about a Scandinavian hero who defeats various monsters, which are Grendel and Grendel's mother, for the king of the Danes. The last part of the poem described the hero Beowulf's funeral. It's not known with certainty who wrote Beowulf, although it's thought to have been put together sometime between the 8th and the 11th centuries. The only known exciting copy of Beowulf is now in the British Library in London. The manuscript was put in paper frames to protect it in 1845, although it is still very fragile. This is the end of our lecture. At the end of the lecture, you are given questions to make self-checking. What is an epic poem? From about when does the only exciting be a wolf manuscript date? What scene is illustrated by Grandon and his mother, Hroga and Beowulf, as well as Hewitt and the Mia? Who wrote Beowulf? When was the oldest surviving manuscript of Beowulf written? A list of terms concerning this lecture. Literature for further reading.